what's real life situation? What can work for Shane and I based on our abilities, our, our, our reputation, our personality, and uh, put the pieces together. And that's kind of what we've done right now. We've been able to take all this different stuff and put it together into something I hope that will work for a long time for us now. What's up, y'all? You're listening to the Carrot Cast podcast, the podcast with a funny name, but a big mission. We help thousands of real estate investors and agents grow rock solid mindsets, do better marketing so that you can build a business of freedom and impact. I'm your host, Trevor Mock. Let's dive into today's episode. What's up, y'all? I've actually got really, really cool guests, two guests with me today. And when I was looking at the notes, I recognized Joe's face. I've seen his website many times. First time meeting Shane, I'll introduce you guys to Shane as well. Uh, but they've been Carrot members almost since the start, since about 2014, a little after we got kicked off. And the cool thing is, as I was div- digging into their story, things to be really, really, really relevant to so many of you investors and agents as well uh, on shifts that they've made in their business. Um, the really high level of it before we dive in and introduce Joe and Shane from Perry Hall Investment Group out of Baltimore is um, they had a big team at one point. They were cranking on deals, but then they they downsized or what I call right sized the company. And now right. the, the past 18 months has been amazing. We're going to talk about the shifts that they made, uh, how they're getting their leads, how they're leveraging carrot for that as well. Uh, what shifts they made in the business to kind of right size that. And, and we'll talk about the pros and cons of all that. But I want to welcome you guys on. What's up? Uh, what's up, Shane and Joe? Welcome hey. on to CareCast. Yeah, what's yeah, up, Trevor? Trevor. Yeah, it's our, it's our pleasure and honor to be uh, on with you, man. I mean, Joe, when Joe told me that uh, we were going to be on Carrot with Trevor Mock, I'm like, are you kidding me? How the heck did you do that? And then, and then you're such a cool, you're such a it's cool, a like, cat. You, yeah, you're a rock star, man. Everybody knows you. Everybody knows Carrot. I mean, you, you, you probably don't get out enough to know that. But in Baltimore, I mean, everybody knows who's in our business, what Carrot's all about. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah it, it, it's funny. Like, like you say, Shane, I'm here in Oregon, right? Small town in Oregon. We have a few customers here. I, I was mm-hmm. just, I had dinner with one a week or two ago, but I don't go to a lot of events. And I was at Investor Fuel a couple of weeks ago, um, the me and Big Mastermind. Mm-hmm. And it's so much fun because uh, oftentimes when, when we're in our own little bubble, we don't get to see the impact directly and have those deep conversations with people. And so this is one of my favorite times during the week when I know we're virtually uh, chatting and connecting, but I just, I'm so appreciative of you guys and, uh, and what you guys bring and that we get a chance to chat today. So absolutely looking forward to it. Looking forward to it, Trevor. So guys, let's, let's do this. Let's set context for everybody listening uh, uh, to this first. So um, I already kind of briefly gave the very high level. Let's, let's kind of dive in, Joe. Um, you guys are in Baltimore. What's the business look like? So what does it look like today? We're going to start with today and then we're going to walk backwards, let's say 18 months to 24 months through the massive shifts you guys have made that actually spun up more deals, more profits, more enjoyability in the business. But where are you guys at today? Team size? What's the market that you tackle? What kind of investing do you do? Yeah, so so typically Shane and I have traditionally been uh, about ninety percent wholesaling. Uh, it's just a business that we enjoy. Um, uh, we we like the interaction of dealing with sellers and buyers and wholesaling deals. Yes, we we buy real estate. We you know we'll flip uh, rehab some properties from time to time, but that is ninety percent of what we do. Mm. And um, where we're at right now, uh, from where we've come, we'll get into a little bit of that's what happened in the last eighteen months. But um, you know, Shane, like you mentioned, right sizing. I mean, I felt like that we've kind of pruned the tree back over the last eighteen months. Um, got rid of some things that were uh, minimizing returns for us and uh, really scaled back and, and really left our, our, our business um, going into 2021, where we were in a better position to start doing uh, more marketing, uh, doing some more marketing. Of course, uh, the Carrot website has been um, excellent for us um, and the SEO over the years that we've built. Uh, but we've built a lot of relationships over the years through referrals and repeat customers. We got some got some good reviews out there, some really good reviews that people are always going to. We know how important that is. And that has really uh, helped us scale up to a level now to where we're doing uh, more advertising. We're taking our time. We're getting into a number of different marketing channels from radio and, and uh, TV to uh, banner ads and 
probate leads, some direct mail, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now, along with the collaboration of some other partners that we're working with, because that's one of those things that we kind of regroup with, uh, with some other wholesalers out there, we said, let's, you know, we weren't sure where everything was going at uh, 15 months ago. So there was a really close knit group of us decided to kind of get back together. Let's try and do this thing together instead of like competing against each other. Let's yep. get our minds, uh, our minds and our thinking and our experience all together. And let's try and, and, and take the few leads that we were getting at that time and, and, and try and maximize them. And um, that's kind of all led up to where we're at right now. Now we have yeah. these really tremendous relationships with um, with some 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 other big wholesalers along with the marketing that we're doing. Um, and it's it's putting us in an excellent spot right now. Yeah, I, I love it. And Shane, when, when we hopped on, you mentioned that you kind of run a lot of the the day to day is, is what I gathered from that that quick combo, I believe. What, what's the team look like right now versus kind of what it, what it was like, let's say, 18 months ago? Yeah, well, I would call it a, uh, uh, you know, like a military specialized group. I mean, uh, yeah. it's Joe, myself, uh, my daughter, Corinne, Joe's wife, and uh, just maybe a couple other people, ancillary people. Um, yeah. So where we might have been 10 or 15, we're, we're five or six. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we're very, uh, very lean and mean. Um, we're able to uh, function at a high level, um, really focus hard on what we do and just drive, 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 which has been, yeah. that's been exciting. I was saying you know, yeah, I do a lot of the grinding. Uh, fortunately, we, we have a partnership where uh, Joe's allowed, um, able to, like you said earlier, spend time above us a little bit so he can work on some of the things that make us better and, and uh, make us more efficient. So we were just talking about this morning using our, our efficiency, our, our uh, thoroughness and our grinding. Dude, so that that's something that I really want to dive into is is how you guys have found the right roles um, to have even more impact. Because in the notes I was reading, you guys you guys are on on pace to have your best year ever this year with a, a yeah. team that's a third of the size than you had a couple of years ago. Right. And so let, let's kind of take people back there. So you guys were you know on on pace to do six hundred plus this year, I believe, right? Or kind of what are you guys looking at? Well, we're sitting about 600 right now. So, Dude, uh, congrats. yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, it, it's, yeah, it's, that's where we're at. It's, it is incredible, but, uh, you would think in this marketplace with limited inventory, low interest rates and everything that's going on with COVID and who knows what else that, um, it'd be tough for a wholesaler, but, um, you know, for us, it's just been uh, years of, of grinding and staying in the game, not quitting and, um, things coming to fruition. Dude, so we're we're gonna talk about how you guys are how you guys are cranking through like what what your marketing mix is those relationships that you built uh, it sounds like that's a key part we're gonna dive into that for sure let's so let's take it back eighteen months now um, COVID hadn't hit yet you guys had a big team what were some of the pain points that you guys were feeling at that point that made you think before even COVID hit man we've got to do something we've got to adjust something yeah yeah do we do we really have to go back there <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, I'll talk a little bit about it. Um, you know, Joe and I, we uh, we went to the school of Sean Terry, and I'm sure you know Sean. Yeah. And uh, we give a lot of props to Sean, and and, uh, and you know, Joe talks about uh, you know our, uh, our our success. We also have a lot of faith. We're, we're people of faith, and and we give mm -hmm. uh, God a lot of honor and glory for what He's done in our lives. But it ain't been easy, man. Um, you know, we we we. Uh, the, I was telling somebody today the wholesaling model. Is typically starts with a VA, you had acquisitions, dispositions, marketing person, and a transactions person. And so we did that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did that like three times in about five years. We did three iterations of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, every time we got better, but um, we just couldn't get that perfect formula down that, that makes us money. Um, you know, wholesaling is such a new industry. And I said that we're always on the forefront of this industry. So we couldn't find the right uh, sales, the acquisitions guys, we couldn't find the right dispositions guys. Baltimore is a very blue collar town. We hustle and we work hard. It's not, I don't, I don't know what a lot of people do around the country, but it's just in their mindset. So mm -hmm. we just couldn't find that right mix. And the pain was letting people go that we, we became close with. Mm -hmm. I mean, Joe spent hours and hours and hours with uh, some of our acquisitions guys. I spent hours with the dispositions. I mean, we had young people working for us, middle-aged people, and it was painful, man. It was really hard to see all that kind of kind of change, you know. So. Yeah, we were try just trying to get ahead. I mean, we were getting to a point of um, spending tens of thousands of dollars on marketing, um, 
And uh, like the summer of 2019, it just got to the point of like diminishing returns. And, you know, I think some of that was probably our fault in how we were were, were, were uh, allocating our, our funds. Um, the other part was, I think, a lot of competition. There was, you know, just tons of people in the business. But uh, we just kind of got to that point. We just could not sustain it anymore. We had a brick and mortar office. You know, it's a really nice office. People knew who we were. We were on a main highway. Um, here in uh, Northeast Baltimore. Um, so we had a, a lot of uh, attention um, and, uh, but it, it just kind of got to the point where, look, we, we got we to go small and keep it all if we want to continue to thrive in this business. And that's ultimately what we did. And like Shane said, extremely painful to do, but uh, in hindsight, it was the, the, best, the best thing we could have ever done for our business. So, so Joe, on, on that, on, on that, on that moment there, I want to kind of put people into that spot that you guys were in at that time. What was kind of the trigger? Was it, did you have a month or two or three where you actually went backwards in the bank account? Did you, you know, what, what was the trigger for you where it's like, this clearly is not working. Was it a financial metric? Was it stress? Was it all the above? Yeah, I would say, and Shane can add to this, definitely, um, uh, definitely some financial stress uh, mm -hmm. for sure. You, you learn some growing pains on uh, on um, spending money, uh, even uh, borrowing money to to uh, uh, to keep the marketing going, because that was always our thought was but we had to keep pumping money and we had yeah. to keep scaling. And there's so many gurus out there. They talk about you know, getting a business and then scaling and selling you this dream of how to build a, you know, a seven figure business a year. And when, unfortunately, what happens is a lot of people, they buy into that. I'm not saying it's right or wrong for some people. It might be right. But I think for a lot of people getting into business, they got this bright and shiny object where they want to start scaling right away. And they begin to, to realize very quickly that um, they're in above their heads and, um, uh, there's no turning back. And unfortunately, a lot of people, a lot of people get stuck quitting in this business because they they just dug themselves into, into a major hole. So financially, yes, big problems there. And then, of course, I think, you know, not to get into uh, personal relationships or anything like that with the team, but just trying to figure out commissions and what people are getting, you know, yeah. paid, um, you know, uh, all the other types of overhead expenses. And then Shane and I kind of be in this situation where it was affecting our relationship the most. And that's the thing we wanted to protect the most. And uh, we felt like if we want to keep this thing going together, brother-in-laws for 35 years, by the way, and we started this thing basically together from day one, you know, we just couldn't let anything get between the both of us. And so we had to do what we had to do to kind of survive, man. Yeah. Dude, that, that's such a big deal too. And I want to kind of give people some context because if, if any of you guys and guys are in this phase or if you're going to go through the phase, which if you're going to grow a company, you're likely going to feel pinches like this. Like it's Absolutely. not unique to, to Joe or, or Shane here. It's something that you're likely going to go through some sort of a phase like this. And when, when you're in that phase, what happens is things start to work really well. You start to get some good money coming in. And Definitely. then oftentimes we, we take our eyes off of some of the results, right? We have some inattention yeah. to results at that point because then, because then we're not the ones doing that thing. So we can't see uh, you know, every day the close ratio and this or that. Maybe our scorecards aren't what we need to have them be, or we're distracted by all the people issues over here. And then over here, we're trusting that someone's doing the, the thing way down the line that we don't look at the scorecard for a month and we go, wow, how did we hit that number there? And right. I don't know if that was relevant to you guys or if you guys went through any of that oh, stuff. Definitely. Crazy. Talk about, talk about scorecard, Shane. Right. I mean, we were driven <laughs> by the scorecard every Monday. Right. I mean, uh, yeah, we went from we went from totally fascinated with it to totally despising it. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, it was like a lot a lot of issues there. Uh, Trev, you asked what the breaking point was. You know, there came a point on the financial side where some things were going on that had not happened in our personal or business lives in our history. Mm. And so that was really like, OK, um, I freaked out a little. Joe was more calm. But then we both came to the conclusion, like, this is not the right way. We're going on the right, wrong path here. Mm. And um, like Joe mentioned, I mean, marketing is it's uh, difficult to manage marketing. It's, it's um, it can get out of control quickly and it's very addictive. Yeah. Um, and you start to you start to think that you need it to, to yep. survive. And what we've right. learned now is uh, not so much. Not 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 always the case. So uh, right. you know, great learning lessons. You like you know, the more pain you go through, the stronger you'll be through it. And Joe made a great point there. We're family, and uh, we couldn't allow our business to get into our you know to mess our relationship up. And so at the end of the day, we made the changes, and it's been it's been good.
I love yeah. it. So one, one thing at a high level, and I want, I want to, I want to go into the change you guys made um, in, in your roles. And, and then we're going to go into the marketing side of it big time too, because that's working really well for you guys, as far as how are you guys getting leads and deals, right? Whether it's marketing or relationships or the whole thing. Um, and so one, one thing that, that I want to ask you guys a question of, so when you guys are looking at scaling, um, a lot of people get locked into the top line number. Like you were saying, like, yeah. hey, I'm going to grow a seven figure business, but they forget that the bottom line is really the, the thing that matters. Did that, did that shift for you guys at all during that time period where, where you focus on, on top line too much and then shifted to bottom line focus or was it kind of what shift did you guys make there that said downsizing is the answer Like you, you mentioned earlier so we can keep more of it. Uh, how, how did that shift in your minds? So my wife was handling our, uh, you know, first of all, you have to have a good accounting software, uh, mm-hmm. QuickBooks. Um, uh, one thing I think we learned, Trevor, was that, um, you know, we always believed in having three things, the wholesaling, the flipping, and the rental. Yeah. Um, but wholesaling was, it just consumed so much of our time that a lot of times we would lose sight of the rentals or the flipping, mm-hmm. and we weren't being profitable over there. So you know, from the top to the bottom, when you looked over at the other side of things, I mean, we, we were cherry picking for our rental properties and we had some great properties and we ult- ultimately ended up divesting of those um, and which helped us out with the financial stuff. But um, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, we could not do both. We couldn't do all three well. And, and that's one of the conclusions that we, uh, that we came to. Our bottom line, Trevor, was always good. It was solid. It, it you know, yeah. you might think, you know, you might think, well, it was falling apart. And it wasn't doing that. It wasn't that. It was certain key things that just weren't operating. I mean, when you're doing a wholesale business and you're doing seven figures, that's that's it, man. That's the yep. numbers, you know? So. Yep. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, we, so, we, we were never a lack for deals. I mean, for some reason, we've been blessed with always finding deals. Shane and I got a knack for just finding deals, whether it's in, you know, all the different methods uh, that, that we all talk about. Uh, but uh, we just been real fortunate with that. So it wasn't like uh, where we went bankrupt and, you know, we lost our house. Thank God we hear those horror <laughs> stories. But thank God it wasn't anything to that extent. We had some debts. We had some creditors. But uh, now we're in a position like we never thought we'd be in right now. So it, it's incredible transformation in the last 18 months. So the roles that you guys have now, um, uh, it sounds like you guys, possibly there might be the visionary and the integrator type of a situation potentially. Uh, how, how did you guys figure out how, you know, who would take what role? And let's, let's kind of break that down. What do each one of you guys do on a day-to-day week to week? And, and how does that drive the company forward? Yeah, well, I've, I've always, uh, and Shane would say this, I've always been kind of the visionary, even though uh, my vision uh, was sometimes blurred o- over the years, <laughs> over the years, over the last couple of months, uh, especially. And Shane certainly has had the faith to stick in there with me and to give me the, the confidence and the uh, uh, the strength to continue on and saying, look, we're going to make mistakes, but you got to get better and let's uh, let's drill down on this and let's uh, make sense of this and let's not go after um, these bright and shiny objects, as I mentioned before, and let's focus on uh, both top line and bottom line numbers here. And, and let's, let's start to build this foundation from another, you know, from a strong, uh, you know, on rock as opposed to on sand. And, and Shane was always right there to be the integrator. Um, and maybe he can speak to that a little bit, but I've always been the guy that brought the brought the things to him. I said, this is what other people are doing. Why don't we try this? Why don't we try that? And uh, we would continue to work those things. And we were never scared of trying different things. And um, ultimately, uh, at the end of the day, um, that's that's where we're at today, because I think we found a system that we can now build upon and, uh, uh, you know, build a sustainable, predictable business going into the future. Shane, if you want to talk about the integration part. Yeah. Um, yeah. So definitely Joe's right on target. Uh, I think again, we were at a Sean Terry, a big event, which are awesome. And, you know, these big events like you were at the mastermind was really cool. And that's kind of where we first kind of heard the terms visionary integrator and import implementer. So, um, it was, uh, you know, Joe was the very, very beginning of our uh, real estate relationship. I remember riding in the car with Joe and we were taking his car to a repair shop and he, you know, he doesn't remember as well as I do, but he said, Hey, let's make some money together. Mm-hmm. And then off we went. And, um, you know, so, uh, it was Joe who had the uh, original vision for us to work in the tax sales, Baltimore tax sales, which we can talk about. And really cool. We talk about that in our classes. Um, uh, you really, we really earned our bones in tax sales, not purchasing tax sales, but sniping them, uh, which is a term Joe came up with. Gotcha. And then when we got, um, after the bubble and took some time off and then we came back, Joe 
had focused on uh, getting us into direct mail. Mm. And that's what led us to kind of Sean Terry and a whole new world that we had never experienced before. Uh, we did a lot of traveling and um, all the, you know, talked groups, about the yeah. negatives, but we had some great, great experiences with a lot of people and our eyes were opened. And then we came home and we would just take those things and we would implement them in Baltimore. Um, people had never seen this stuff before, never, you know, never experienced what we were doing. And uh, we were aggressive with it. Uh, we were decision. We made quick decisions, right or wrong. And then we, um, we made adjustments and that's, you know, that's what created a lot of our success. I mean, hundreds and hundreds of deals. It's just, it was just yeah, awesome. Shane, yeah. But Shane is really the real integrator. He makes things work. He's, he's an organizer. He, he, uh, he's owned companies before he, we were part of a family business before where he, uh, you know, he oversaw about 40 or 50, uh, servicemen and, and a contracting business that we had. So he really had the experience to put the pieces together. I would bring him some ideas and then he would be able to implement this and put it together. Cause all the years, whether it's Sean Terry or you guys and all the content that you guys bring on other gurus, you know, we were definitely looking at this stuff. Like Shane said, it's brand new. Let's, let's jump in there and let's just start doing it and now here we are mature later eight years into the business full time now and now we've been able to kind of take a step back and be able to decipher this stuff and say you know what's real life situation what can work for shane and i based on our abilities our our, our reputation our personality and uh put the pieces together and that's kind of what we've done right now we've been able to take all this different stuff and put it together into something i hope that will work for a long time for us now Dude, I, yeah. I, I I love it. I love it. So go, yeah. going into 2020, let's kind of break apart. 2020 hit. You guys had started to, to right size the business. COVID hit. How did that impact your guys' business once 2020 happened? Uh, what what happened there? Well, I tell you, going into like the, the winter and then into March 2020, March 12th, I think was the date. Um we, uh, you know, Shane and I have always had a couple deals in our pocket. You know, we always had something, right, Shane? We've always had a pipeline, even if it was a couple deals to look forward to. I mean, it was definitely tough. And it was, if it wasn't for, um, and I'm, I'm not saying this just to kind of stroke you a little bit, but I mean, our, our carrot site, our website, uh, bringing in some good leads through the through the winter and and honestly uh, most of the uh, the deals that we're able to, the leads that we're able to convert in carrot i mean we typically average twenty thirty thousand dollars a deal so that that kind of that converted us right into march and then when march hit you know we still had a handful of deals but then the liquidity fell apart right capital fell apart um so deals were falling through people were delaying their purchase of the deals we weren't getting much leads and that happened for about two months and that's really where um all the different things of us um um uh, uh, where everything that we're doing right now, it really collab it really all came together in that March to like May period, right, Shane? And then from June on, it's been gangbusters since then. And then in March of 2021, I mean, we really went up another level beyond that. So we've gone up about two, and we could be on the, the cusp of a third uh, plateau here um, this fall, the way that things are looking are, are, are looking out right now. So. Yeah, that, absolutely. That is, so that's cool. Yeah. So what would yeah. you what would you guys do? So you guys had the carrot SEO cranking, um, and you guys you guys have been doing that for for years, right? But we've uh, been doing like it for I, years. Yeah, but like yeah. like I talk evergreen marketing, right? So as, right. as soon as you get off the hamster wheel of the other things, or if there's right. a market condition that happens, you're still going to have the people coming to you because th this doesn't stop. Like that, that's people, right. Mm -hmm. People going to Google and saying, "I've got a problem. How can I help? How, who can solve this?" That doesn't stop. It actually goes up during times like that. Yeah, sometimes. yeah. Look, in 2020, uh, we were not spending any money on marketing. I think about this. Six months earlier, okay, in 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 the summer of 2019, we were spending you know, twenty five, thirty five thousand dollars a month in marketing. And we run to zero basically, except for the carrot website, um, some other things, some other uh, third party vendors that we need, call rail and maybe some call rail uh, 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 VA. Uh, but outside of that, I mean, we went to pretty much nothing. Right, Shane? I mean, we weren't spending any money on advertising. And what happened is that we felt like all the seeds that we had sowed over the previous years, 
whether it was care, whether it was referrals, whether it was repeat customers, they were still coming to us. Mm. And I'm, I'm thinking to myself, what are we doing? We, when we got out of the office, Shane went in his house. I went into my house and we scaled down. I'm like, where are we getting leads from? And I didn't realize, like, we completely underestimated the power of our network that we had out there. Yeah. And uh, thank God the leads just continued to come in. And um, that sustained us through that whole spring of 2020 and into the summer where things we could really see that things were getting back on track again. So that, they're, they're really the three or four main things. That's it. There's nothing else, man. Dude, I, yeah. I, I love it. And the reason I want to I highlight this big time, Joe, is because um, we'll talk about evergreen marketing a lot, right? And we, we talk about it from the angle of content SEO, getting ranked well in Google uh, in front of people when they're searching. But another form of evergreen marketing is what you just talked about there, with, it's relationships. Right. That's right. When, when you build a relationship and you build that trust, it's going to keep, it's going to keep in an evergreen way producing for you. And so let's kind of dig down, t- double tap that a little bit more. So evergreen marketing with the online evergreen with carrot and then the offline with relationships is really what, what carried you through. What, what do you see as far as like, you mentioned the deal size with carrot uh, tends to be pretty strong with yes. your referrals. How, how does that work on the referral side? Are those really strong deals, strong leads kind of how, how who are the people sending you those leads? Why don't they close them themselves? Those kinds of questions. Well, Shane can elaborate on this, but I want to say this quick. There's two types of referrals. There's referrals from people we've done business with before, and they know somebody has a property they want to sell. That's mm-hmm. number one. Number two is there's another referral out there, which is from uh, really from um, other other people in our space that want to come together with us to collaborate on deals. Cause we've always had a huge network of buyers, which by the way, we built through Tara. We have over, I think three or 4,000, somewhere between three and 4,000 uh, buyers on our list uh, through our MailChimp app. So um, they, they were two big uh, collaborators that we used. Shane, you want to, and, and Shane, Shane has done awesome with, uh, he he is more of the buyer. He deals a lot with the end buyer and he's got all the relationships on his phone that makes him a ton of money on that iPhone with these <laughs> cash buyers out there. Absolutely. Um, he was talking yeah. about that the other night, that all the money he's made just on his phone um, and through the things that you're saying there. Go ahead, Shane. Yeah, yeah it's uh, incredible. Like we talk about technology, Trevor, and um, you know, Joe and I both uh, grew up in the 80s and started business in the 90s. So in the 90s, uh, we were still on answering machines, fax machines, and beepers. That's how we started. And yeah. to be able to go from there to this phone, which I call the, yeah. our, our little slot machine, uh, every time I'm on my phone every day and the amount of money that we make just on our phone, I can't believe it. It's so fun to be to use this little device and to be able to not have to travel and all these other things. I mean, we do a lot of traveling and running, but at the end of the day, we make most of it using using the phone. So. Like Joe was saying, collaborations, and everybody's doing that right now. Um, we basically leveraged all of our collaborations to help create uh, business for us, both on both sides. And, mm-hmm. and these days, our phones ring off the hook. Like you said, Trevor, when we first started, it won't stop. Unless we stop, it won't stop. Yeah. Uh, like we're talking now, of course, our phones are all blowing up because it never stops, which is, is a great, great problem to have. Mm-hmm. And so... Um, we, we, we realized, okay, business is now 24 seven. We can jump into this pond and this river anytime we want to. And I call it like, like you're out there on the West coast, like bears jumping and grabbing salmon as they're running upstream. That bear can walk over anytime he wants to, and he can grab a big old fish and then he can eat that fish, take a nap and come back and then fish will still be there. And that's mm-hmm. the way we play it. That's the way we roll. So anytime we want to jump into that pond, with all of our friends and all these relationships we built, all we have to do is say, Hey, we're back and we're ready to go. And that's mm-hmm. what, yeah. that's what, and, and vice versa. When anybody calls us, we're always there for them. Any way we can help them, anything that we can share with them. We never burned a bridge in our business. We always told each other, even when we got frustrated with certain customers or certain um, b- uh, buyers or whatever, we said, look, just put them on a the bench for a while and let's, let's not burn any bridges. And because we had that mindset, it's been uh, so beneficial to us. I mean, Trevor, we can't begin to explain unless you were with us every day how many deals come because of those relationships. Yeah, yeah, this this is awesome. So Shane, you, you talked about the buyer side of it, and I just popped into the back of your carrot site. Yeah, there's thousands of buyers in there. So yeah. how how are, how are the buyers getting in there? Are they googling your website and finding it? Are you guys driving them to that kind of what, what are you doing to build that buyers list? Yeah, I think it's well, a that's, combination. Yep, that's Go ahead, Shane. Yep. No, that's, yeah. that's Joe's side, totally. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I would say it's a, it's a combination of both. Um, you know, when you've been in the game and you stick in there for long enough without quitting, uh, we know that Google and some of the other search engines, you know, so much of 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 uh, your reputation is 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 uh, they look at your reputation. The longer you're in there, the longer you're hanging in there, the more content that you're you know you're putting up deals, uh, that sort of thing. That's one thing is people or they could just Google, you know, buy investment properties in Baltimore City and or Baltimore whatever in Central Maryland, and they'll see. Um, our name comes up, comes up first. We're also connected to, uh, you know, connected investors, bigger pockets, um, you know, local RIA groups. Um, and that's just um, um, taking a life of its own right now. Uh, and honestly, we don't, we could be spending a hell of a lot more time on, on building our buyers list and, and we probably will soon, but uh, just really without doing a whole lot of, uh, uh, putting a whole lot of attention to it. It's grown to the number that we have right now. And every every week we've got several people coming on. So um, and that's that's our strength. Our strength is, that's the niche. When you're a wholesaler, it's great about getting the deal, right? Getting the deal with the seller. But our value as a company is who we can turn around and sell that property to and make 20 or 30 or 40,000 bucks. So that's a connection. That's what that seller is paying you for yep. is that you can turn around and make that kind of money. Most people ain't got, and that takes a while to build a business like that where Shane can pick up the phone and make a handful of phone calls and have a property sold within minutes, mm -hmm. sight unseen. And that's all because of this. And that's where the money comes from is from that buyer's list. And I would well, tell anybody that, buy, that out there. Yeah. Yeah. That buyer, mm -hmm. that buyers, I told Joe the last six months, the buyers that we've gotten because of the carrot site and how that operates have been extremely quality, qualified, quality people. And when yeah. you do volume, like we're doing right now, I mean, we're churning and burning, um, you know, the, you, you need to be able to reach out to certain people to get the deals done so you can keep the pace. It's mm, the pace that's yeah. important at times. And so, um, you know, these guys that are coming, I mean, they're just such good people. You spend time with them, you talk to them a little bit, you have a really good feel that these are really good buyers and that they should be getting these properties yeah. and they do the right things with them and they settle quickly, no headaches, no hassles, mm. none of that crap that we have to deal with, with the other uh, pretenders. Right, right. So on, on, on the buyers, um, same thing. I want to, I want to dive into this a little bit more. This is a, a cool topic because we don't talk buyers yeah. a lot on the podcast. No, so I believe a lot it. Of sellers, yeah. right? And right. So I'm looking at the carrot site. Like I said, you guys have thousands of buyers in there. You guys are getting them organically. Uh, a lot of them. Um, when, when a lead comes in the buyer side, because you, you'll usually get a higher volume of leads through from buyers and sellers. Are there certain ones you guys call? Like, how, how do you guys know which ones to pick up the phone and call? You mentioned they go into a, a Mailchimp campaign. How do you yeah. how do you call out the volume and get down to the the best few? Well, let me ask you the first part of that. I don't. I know some people have subgroups and they point out to. Uh, well, I know this group of people want this particular deal. Mm -hmm. I've never gotten to the point of prejudging uh, deals for specific. Uh, groups of uh, criteria and what what uh, certain buyers are looking for always send it out to everybody now shane in his phone and in his uh his contact his address book has that he has that in mind and he has it saved where he can pick up four or five guys and he can sell something quickly whether we put it out to our list or not and shane if you want to expand on that a little bit um as to how he's been able to really it's a tightrope right everybody wants deals Nobody wants to get their feelings hurt. Nobody wants to feel like they've been gypped because you took one buyer over another. I mean, it really is a delicate balancing act and being able to keep relationships together without uh, anybody walking away feeling like they've been uh, ripped off. And Shane can speak a lot more to that than I can, but he's done, I could say he's done an incredible job with that. Yep. Yeah, the, the buyer you were asking about how we do it. So, you know, when you downsize and when you right size, um, you, there's certain things that you don't get. So we're, we don't have a team of people reaching out to the buyers. What we do is um, we take the deals. When we have the deals and they're coming in, uh, that's when we really spend the time with the buyers. Okay. So for instance, like Joe was saying on my phone. So what Joe will put an ad out, a really quality ad, and everything on there that, that I need to, uh, he supports me to, so that I can sell the deal. Mm -hmm. So the information on the ad is, is super important. It's a really good looking ad. So then that limits the amount of questions that I have to answer. Mm -hmm. Then I can focus on the quality of the buyer that I'm dealing with. And after dealing with it over and over and over again, you just have a really good feel. So first of all, we treat them really good. 
we treat the buyers as good as the sellers. We know how we know how important they are to closing the deal. So it's always a thank you, please. Hey, man, how are you? I never just jump right into a conversation with them. I spend time talking to them. I try to remember stuff that's going on in their families and things of that nature, the same way we we, we would do with a, with a seller. So I treat them yeah. with respect and, and quality. And then as that works out, I see if I get the same back, Trevor. If I'm not getting that same in return, then you know at the end of the day, that's not the person I want to deal with. I want to deal with somebody yeah. who who is really about and, and we can all sit here and talk about the money and talk about the deals. But at the end of the day, we know life is not about that. Life's about the, the time that we spend with other people. And that's what we're looking for. Are these people who get it? Are they givers in this life or are they takers? Takers you can never deal with, man. Givers all day long. Yeah, absolutely. He's so Dude, right. This- this is so good because like I said, uh, everyone's looking for sellers and we're really good at that. But the buyer side of it, like you're saying, is part of what carried you through uh, that transition because uh, you could go back to those buyers. You go back to those relationships that you had. You go back to the seller. So let's, I want to kind of make a, actually, I want to bring up something really quick. Then I want to make a slight shift and then we're going to talk about uh, your current marketing mix, what you're testing now. And I know you guys are training, you guys are training investors how to do what you're doing as well. So we'll talk about that at the end. But um, I pulled up your, your carrot site, the buyer site. Like I said, it's got thousands of leads in there. This one came in just a couple of days ago. Google search. I'm not going to tell people the phone number or whatever, but it's Tiana. Uh, it said it came from an internet search. And um, I'm looking for houses to rehab and sell, to live in, hold as rentals. Uh, looking in Baltimore City. Price range, 25 to 50K. Uh, looking for a big discounts. So she's looking for big discounts, but uh, <laughs> uh, it says cash, IRA, and bank financing. And once again, I don't know how quality that lead is, but the cool thing is when you leverage that, the carrot tool, you can modify the, the questionnaire on there. Uh, some people ask all kinds of good questions, but the way, the way that we've structured that questionnaire specifically to get and filter out the good from the bad, because when you're asking what area, what type of properties, how much of a discount, um, where are you getting your money? Uh, it basically really, start, you can look and go, well, this person's probably serious or not, uh, which is really cool. And then, like you said, you then have a property to market the ones that react and respond. Then you hop on calls and you can look at their profile in here, uh, which is really powerful. So uh, those things are coming in all the time. I'm just looking at your lead source here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Every day there's all different ones, but I think it does pull down. Everybody knows this. It probably pulls down to about three to 5% of everybody in your buyers list are you know, they're going to be the repeat buyers. They're going to be the the cream that rises to the top that, that Shane and I are dealing with most of the time. Um, and uh, we'd love for that to grow. That's the whole idea. We want more competition. We want more money for our deal. And we want ultimately better relationships with, with our buyers um, that have the mm-hmm. same kind of values um, that we have. Dude, here, here's another cool one. So there's a Kyle that call or that that put in his information. Came from a Google search August 19th, early in the morning, um, 5, 5.24 a.m. And he was actually reaching out on your buyer site because he Googled your company name from a radio ad. Um, yeah. It's probably what it, what it came from. There was someone who specifically mentioned radio ad. And this person said, I've, I have three properties I want to, I would like to get a price on, which is really cool. So let's talk about the radio side and kind of your marketing mix. What are you guys testing now and how, how, are, how are the things working right now? Yeah, this is, this is all Joe, man. I mean, he's, this is his, uh, his uh, sweet spot is, is marketing. I, I tell you, if there's a, you know, as we talk about each other, encourage each other and share, uh, he has a nose like a, it, when we, when we worked, we worked for our family's a large roofing company and Joe was always able to find where these large money sources were. Now that was millions of dollars, big time bucks. And um, I remember it cause I would sit in our office. I would sit behind Joe and I could watch him at work. So, um, you know, when the, when the, uh, when the bubble hit, uh, it affected all of us, and it especially in uh, Baltimore, around the country. But um, I don't think we lost Joe. Uh, but the, what happened was um, Joe was able to build relationships with government people where we hadn't done that before. We had not had to go into the government sector before, so he was able to reach into this government and build these really cool relationships with these government uh, contractors, and it really helped our company. So. I knew that if Joe would like focus on certain parts of marketing, he's the one who took us in the direct mail stuff. He's the one who kind of aimed us at those things. And that's where we had um, uh, so much success. So the radio stuff that, that Joe's been putting together now is great. He'll share a little bit more on how um, and why, why he went into radio. Also, uh, uh, Trevor, we also like 
uh, changed our brands a couple little a little bit. Um, we've been uh, testing and operating in, in adjusting our brands. So um, I created a new brand and we're using that to, to help us. And one of the things in Baltimore as well as around the country is the competition. So let's say uh, a, a seller calls in and a seller is going to now reach out to, instead of reaching out to three, well, first of all, when Joe and I first started, it was only us, Joe and I, wholesalers, and no other competition in Baltimore and, and uh, maybe a real estate agent. So then um, as it grew, we, we had to adjust to the competition. And one of those ways was to be, um, so if you're going to, if the caller, if the seller is going to ask for 10 uh, offers for his property, well, why can't we be three, four or five of those? That's how we changed the metrics. <laughs> I like you it. Know? Right. I like it. That was, like that was part of the collaboration. I, I lost you there for a minute. Hopefully you can hear me. But um, yeah, that was part of the collaboration that we did. I mean, there, there are a couple, you know, companies out there and they could be reaching out to us separately. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's just kind of what we had to do to kind of get things back in order. And um, that that is that is uh, moving ahead and we'll see how that goes. But um, Joe, well, talk, about the, uh, yeah. talk, talk about that radio ads a little bit. Yeah. So what we did it, what we, like I said, in 2020, there was just, uh, I didn't want to do any advertising. I felt like we were still getting enough deals. I mean, last year we had, right, Shane, we had a hundred thousand dollar wholesale fee last year, right? We did like a $2 million, $2 million uh, uh, apartment, uh, 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 56 unit apartment complex last year that came right at the right time, June of 2020 last year that we were working on for about six months. And we had some other big deals in there as well. So, so we were a little protective of the money that, uh, that we were bringing in there. So we were a little, uh, uh, being not so much, uh, the event abundant mentality with wanting to go out and spend marketing. But I knew that once 2021 would hit that it was time to start doing some things marketing. And one of the things that I pivoted to, and I heard this from a few people, it might've been on your podcast, Trevor, or somebody else about getting into radio spots. And, um, and in, in February, I was able to work out with some local AM stations and an FM station. I think we're on about three or four stations right now. And, um, but it started with an AM station that we were doing at night, you know, so it was off peak, you know, 6 AM or 6 PM to 6 AM in the mornings. So they were very cheap ads and they had the right kind of audience that we were looking for, which were basically people that were 60, 65 and older looking to downsize. Um, they had an extra property. Maybe uh, maybe their spouse passed away. Whatever the case may be, Shane and I have always done well with the older person, the baby, uh, the baby boomer that's that's downsizing. Uh, which we know is a great wealth transfer that we're in the midst of with baby boomers. And we just felt like that's been a market. And, and instead of going out and, and um, spending money or like on uh, uh, cold calling or uh, RVMs, um, you know, with uh, uh, the reverse voice mailing, which we've tried all those things and there's nothing wrong with it. If it's your niche, do it. Uh, we just decided this was going to be one of our two or three marketing niches. And what I wanted, what I envisioned was I want people calling me with properties they want to sell instead of vice versa. Me calling them and asking them, hey, you got a property for sale? No, I don't. You know, are you considering? No, I'm not. I want leads that are coming into us of people that are ready to sell in the next three to six months, if not right now. And because we're 52 years old, you know, we're not young bucks in this business. And um, we just um, want to get to a point where we could start automating. You know, we have VAs that can handle and qualify these leads for us. But I'd rather at this point in our lives, Trevor, be able to get a little more quality than quantity. And unfortunately, that's been working out for us. And we've been able to expand that out into banner ads. Uh, so banner ads, radio ads have been two big areas. Probates has always been an area, even through thick and thin. Uh, when we right-sized last year, we were still pumping out the probate leads. And um, and then, of course, uh, everything that we're doing online, SEO and keratinol, that's about the the the, myth, the the bulk of what we're doing marketing right now. Dude, I, I love it. So on, on the radio one, if, if we can, let's kind of break this down a little bit sure. and then we'll, then we'll, we'll move to... Uh, to a close, but on the radio one, what do your metrics look like? So if you do a radio ad, how does it work cost wise? Um, yeah. Do you guys have any numbers that you've kind of got to figure out on cost for deal, cost for lead, that kind of a thing yet? Well, we're in August. We started the, the, the actual campaigns actually kicked off in March. So we okay. got, a, we got about five or six months of, of data, but I yeah. can tell you this, that basically, um, 
Um, Shane, um, I don't have not probably should have these numbers for you when I when I jumped on here, but you know, we're averaging anywhere from three to four deals from from radio and and typically I, uh, these are again, I mean, our average deal year to date is twenty thousand dollars. But when you talk about carrot leads and radio ads, I mean, we've been closing thirty and forty thousand dollar deals from 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 radio ads in this market in Baltimore in very competitive neighborhoods because mm. people just look. People's attitudes have not changed too much from where they were two years ago yep. before this market went. Okay, the bottom line is they still have the same distressors, they still have the same problems. And they still want to get rid of the house for the same reasons. Yes, they realize that the market has gone up a little bit and they try to factor that in um, and we'll we'll compensate for that. But also, so has the buyer's market. Buyers are willing to pay more. So everything is just kind of shifted up a layer, Mm -hmm. you know. So we've been able to uh, hold our fees where they're at and in some cases really be making more money. Right, Shane? Yeah. um, Just real quick on the metrics, too. um, I would say this, you know, uh, first of all. Um, again, we were always taught in this business um, from our from our gurus and our guys, you know, four to six X. It's got to be four to six X. And that's yeah. different with ra- radio. It's always going to be minimum, yeah. minimum four X. Now, with radio and again, Joe and I spent a lot of time when we were in our other business on on buying radio and how to buy it and everything. So, um, you know, I think, and Joe, you might talk to like maybe two grand a month might get you 70, 80, a hundred spots. Joe was able to work out a really good negotiate, a really good deal with the current station that he's on. And, yeah. um, this is a local, very conservative kind of, uh, conspiracy theorist <laughs> station sometimes. Yeah. Late night, um, you know, of course, TV. Late, yeah. 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 local yeah. guys that we, we love, we've known them for a long time, but um, <laughs> it's the crowd of people that we like. So, um, yeah. so that's fun. But I, I don't know, Joe, do you know what those Yeah, I, I'll give you some metrics on So basically, I mean, look, in our area here, if you're doing off peak, just to, not, not to get too down the rabbit trail here with people, but just to give you a sense, a lot of people think it's really expensive and that's out of their purview of being able to do things. But, but honestly, I mean, you can, you can get, uh, if, if you do, uh, some of the things that we're doing, I mean, uh, I think we're spending, uh, on, on Perry Hall Investment Group ends, we're, we're spending about three thousand thirty three hundred dollars a month just on radio, and that's basically that's about two hundred spots a month. So that's okay. 50, 50 spots a week to be bringing in basically sixty to eighty thousand dollars a year. So yeah, four to six x is our ratio, but we're probably more in that ten x uh, uh, areas where we're at ROI. Dude, that that that's yeah. killer because yeah, you guys are bringing yeah. in. So a few grand a month uh, in the cost. You yeah, closing several deals a month from it. Yeah, um, ten deals a month is about where we're at closing here to date. Yeah, dude, that that's crazy, yeah. man. So mm-hmm. guys, what what I want everyone to 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 realize when we're listening to this is what what they did is they had a bunch of marketing methods going at once that was just all right. over the place. It sounds like in 2019, getting deals done right, but you're sure. looking at it going, how do we streamline this, make it more enjoyable? You right size the business, found the right roles for you guys, brought in family. You have VA, just really right size that business, and then you said, let's trim it all. Um, and you really started stacking things up one by one. I think that's a big lesson here. Is a lot of people try to do 14 things at once. Yeah. And you said, let's trim it all. Let's clear the deck and we're going to stack them up. Carrot, you know, getting organic stuff coming in. It's closing deals. And now let's try, and then relationships, right? And now let's try radio and let's try this. And so yeah, guys, yeah, don't Trevor, try to do them all at once. You, stack them. Right. You got my metrics right in front of you. You go to the uh, Houses for Cash Baltimore site. You'll see the uptick that we've had just in the last month from adding banner ads to our radio ads now and driving them to our carrot site. I mean, you can see the number of views that have come up and um, that obviously is generating into leads and, and awesome, awesome deals. I mean, really oh, yeah. great deals without, you know, we don't have to do 15, 20, 30 deals a month. Like there's a, there's a group down the street from us that you may know that's in the Northern DC, Virginia area that Shane and I like to talk about a lot. These guys are doing 45 to 60 deals a month. We don't need to do that. We don't need to do it. You know, I'd rather focus in on quality and big fees that we're actually going in and helping people and uh, it being a win-win situation for everybody. And that's where we are with our business. And you're right. Uh, that's how we've matured by taking all this scattered stuff and now pulling it down to a handful of things that we feel work really well for us. 
Dude, I, I, I love it. And I'm, I'm in the back, back end of your site, looking at the stats houses for cash Baltimore. And yeah, it was around July, like around the start of July was when you must've been doing that. Cause the traffic on there climbed quite a bit yes. all the way through July, August. Um, I, I love it. Yes. Yeah, so that yes. must've been when you guys started doing the banners. Uh, yes. The, start the banners. Yep. That is cool. I love it. Well guys, uh, man, I, I appreciate you guys coming on and sharing and, and I Absolutely. could talk for another, another hour. Absolutely. Um, I've got, I've got one question for you, but then I also want, uh, I want, um, you guys to share how people can get a hold of you. Cause I know you guys help people uh, do this. You guys have a course uh, you guys have created teaching people what you do as well. I don't make any money from me, money from me. Y'all they've been customers for years and years and years. And that's my main question here is there's all kinds of options, right? That you could choose uh, to go get a quote unquote website up. Uh, if we're just looking for a website, you can go do that at Wix and get one up for just cheap or free. Um, why have you guys stuck with carrot and grown with carrot over the years, over the past shoot, six, seven years now? Yeah, well, I think it's a great question, and maybe Shane can add to this. But I mean, let's face it: when I we first got back into the real estate after taking time off after the '08 financial crisis and uh, getting a family business in order that Shane and I both worked for for years, and then decided to go uh, knee deep into this thing, um, you know, it was the first thing that came to us. So it came by good recommendation. Come go to uh, Investor Carrot. And since then, uh, I just felt like I haven't seen anything else out there. I'm sure there probably is, but that's so dedicated to investors, uh, but specifically for wholesalers. And uh, there's been no reason why fix something that isn't broke. And um, it's great metrics. It's very easy to, uh, uh, it's very easy, user friendly. And, um, I, you know, it's just been an automated thing for us that, um, that I, you know, I don't see any reason why we would change it. So that's, that's my two cents on it. And I think it's been great. If, if you had to ballpark and if you don't have the number that's cool but if you had to ballpark how how much revenue has has carrot brought in uh foreign with you guys over the years <laughs> jeez um i mean we're talking since 2014 so i mean we probably e even in our leanest times we were getting you know maybe one one deal a month in our leanest times without really doing anything 2014 15 16 amongst all the other stuff that we're doing but i mean it's millions i mean it's flat out millions and i'm not talking uh the number of houses sold times their purchase price i'm talking about the number of houses sold times our fee okay so uh it's it's been millions it's been millions so uh so why change that? It's been great. You guys have been a great partner with it. I would recommend anybody that's getting started for 50 bucks or whatever it is uh, to jump on a customized uh, investor friendly website, as opposed to some generic website out there that knows nothing about wholesaling or investing. Dude, Very simple. I, I, yeah. I, I love it. And I want to toss it your guys way now. So uh, how can people find you, follow you? And what are you, what are you guys doing right now? Working on uh, the training you, you guys mentioned, talk about that a little bit. Where can people find you and learn about it? Yeah. So, um, and then Shane can, Shane can elaborate to this. So Shane and I have always had a, uh, we always like teaching. Shane has, has teach things over the years. I've teach things as a, a financial planner and being in the construction business and being in front of people. And we always had a desire to take the information that we've learned, our experiences, our ups and downs, our trials and tribulations and our successes and really culminate together into a really a nuts and bolts, A to Z, all the blocking, all the tackling of how to do a wholesale deal from A to Z, potentially doing it on a part-time basis, making a few thousand bucks a year to maybe a full-time endeavor to where we're at right now. So it would work for anybody. So over the last year, we've always done for um, the local Baltimore RIA, we've always done big Saturday classes, right? All day class. Um, um, on wholesaling. And then we we just evolved from that to where Shane and I put together really a 10-week um, intensive course. Like I said, nuts, nuts and bolts, uh, gets into a lot of detail. Shane and I have seen a lot of gurus and different experts around the country and the things that they're doing uh, for us to educate ourselves and also to see what other people are doing in terms of building their classes. And we just feel like that our class, um, just by the reviews that we've had a number of people, we've been beta testing it here in the Baltimore area um, on a very uh, intimate level, um, typically about 10 to 15 people. OK, and uh, now we're moving into a phase where it's um, it's 2.0 It's called wholesale uh, wholesaling for fast cash, how to make ten thousand dollars in the next 60 days or less. 
wholesaling for fast cash, how to make 60K or 10K in the next 60 days or less. And this class is a, it's a Zoom call. It's going to be recorded, uh, but we're going to be there to answer questions for you. But it's uh, basically a, a nuts and bolts from A to Z. Shane, you want to add to that? Yeah, man. Uh, Trev, you talked about, you were saying that we love teaching. I was telling somebody the other day, I'm like, I don't know why we love it so much. But uh, yeah. you start doing it. It's very cool. And you asked me about Thursday night. Thursday night is our class night, man. We love being on gotcha. the Zooms with our people and um, telling them and teaching them how to do it. So we we were at this event the other night, and um, one of the guys was like, he was attaching to me right away. And he's like, hey, man, can I get your help on a problem? I, he, he got himself into a real, real bind, real pickle. So I was like, yeah, I'll help you out, man. He signed. I said, you sign up for the class. I'll be glad to help you. Next day, he calls me. He says, can you come down with me? I, you know, I got a problem with the sellers and everything. I was like, all right, what's going on? So he could not get access to the house. And I was like, all right, all right I got this, right? So I get on the phone. I could, I talked to the husband. I was like, look, man, you want to settle with this property in, in two weeks? This is what we need now. We need access. We need a lockbox. Uh, him and hawn, him and hawn. And finally, he's like, all right, go ahead and do it. Well, this guy who signed up for our class, he thought that was the greatest thing he had ever seen before. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, hey, man, I'm just glad to be able to help you. But teaching people how to do this right. Joe and I, one of our big things was always make wholesaling legitimate. It's a legitimate yeah. business. And yeah. the way you do that is you start breaking down the pieces of it and you start training and teaching people how to do things right. Because there's a lot of people making a mess of things out there, sloppy yeah. as all heck. Get out of yeah. control, chase uh, shiny objects and every other stupid thing, embarrass themselves and lose deals and make it worse on all of us. Stop doing that. Let us spend some time with you, show you how to do this right professionally, make a lot of money, be happy and have a great reputation. Dude, I, I yeah. love where, where, can, where can people find you guys? Well, what they can do, they can definitely. Um, so right now we're building out a website. I mean, you're like cool. the first to know it, Trevor. Except <laughs> you're locally, locally here in Baltimore, so awesome. you guys are lucky, man. So we're we're going to have it uh, a 2.0 class out. But if you want to direct, uh, reach out directly to us. You can uh, Shane, what's your email, and I'll give I'll give mine. Um, yeah, yeah, mine is. Uh, you see my name there, it's Shane dot Bloyer B L O Y E R at gmail dot com. I've used that for a while. It's just nice and simple. It kind of yeah, works and, for me. So and I. Simple. Yep. And I'm Joe at figproperties.com. That's spelled P as in Paul, H I G properties with I E S at the end.com. That's short for Perry Hall Investment Group.com. Um, and then in terms of the course, just email out to us right now. I mean, literally, we're getting up a nice um, site where people can go and they can get this content uh, from us. It'll be the, the 10 week intensive course. There'll be some. Some uh, there'll be another course on how to how to snipe tax sale properties throughout the whole country mm -hmm. that we're going to be putting out without spending any money. And really, you know, one thing I want to say real quick before we end, Trevor, is that we show people how to bootstrap. I mean, Shane and I are about bootstrapping. We have relatives that are self-employed and have a uh, really great, uh, uh, you know, internet and um, um, tech uh, tech businesses, and they always um, we always had this knack for bootstrapping, and we really show people. Um, how to get into their warm market, their their family, their friends, their extended network, their social network of how to go out and find their first one to two deals without spending tons of money on marketing, direct mail, all the noise that you hear out there about how to get deals. And, and if we can show people how to do that, they'll be off to a much better start working in a warm market versus going out into the cold market and getting killed. Yeah, that, that, that's that's so big. That's so big. And what we'll do is yeah. we'll, we'll grab uh, once you guys have the, the domain name for that site, let us know. Yeah. We'll put it in the show notes. We'll link it up because it is be good. Good there, guys. Email and or uh, click the link when, when we get the URL. Reach out to yeah. them because they've been doing yeah. it for a long time. Uh, been carrot members shoot almost since the beginning. It's been so cool seeing you guys grow and also having a chance to finally meet you guys. So proud of the yeah. shift y'all made. Uh, and I want everyone who's listening to this to, to look at the different stages that they've been in just a lot, even the last two years and see what shifts did they make? What can you learn from that? Um, yeah. What did they do on the carrot side and stack on the relationships and stack on other uh, types of marketing like like radio and TV or radio ads. So guys, I'm proud of you guys. Uh, Thank you, Trevor. You. Appreciate Hopefully it. we get yeah. to meet each other in person one of these days as well. Absolutely, Absolutely man. We would love that. There. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank, you. Thank you guys. Have an amazing, amazing rest of the day. And everybody Ooh. go follow too, yeah. Joe, follow Shane, and uh, rate and subscribe to the Carrot Cast. We'll talk soon. Yep. Thanks, guys. All right. God bless.